Oakland, LA, Oakland, Vegas, Raider Nation, wherever, forever. You got your old Uncle Mosh and Raiders fan radio from Murph's Man Cave, taking a lighter journey into the dark side. Sit back, put your feet up, pop a top, and enjoy the ride. Here we go! We miss you, we love you, and we'll see you in the Hall of Fame. When you have great coaches, then after you have great coaches, you get great players, you have a great organization, and you tell them one thing, just win, baby. Way up the middle, intercepted to the piano at the 50. Football, and I think Oakland victory. The Oakland Raiders have scored on the most famous, unbelievable, absolutely impossible dream of a play. Well, I love this team. I think this team can win. I think this team can What is up, Raider Nation? Your buddy Murph back once again for a Raiders fan radio conversation. That's right. What's where we uh, we talk to all kinds of cool people. We talk to uh, uh, celebrities within Raider Nation. We talk to Raiders players. We talk to members of the media. And uh, that's what we are going to get to tonight. We are going to welcome in a good friend of the show, our buddy Ted Wynn, who is a writer for uh, The Athletic. He's an NFL staff writer. He started off, this guy's got a really cool story. He started off on Twitter uh, just doing like like analysis just doing like like film analysis like breaking down um footage from the from the different teams and and, and mainly the raiders and then uh, and then worked that into a uh in, into an official job with with the athletic and, and got hired on and is now a, a professional nfl staff writer for them and and uh, so we kind of knew him way back when uh when he when he first started off and was and was a fledgling writer and then now uh and now he's uh he's with a, a big outfit like the athletic and so uh continued success to him and we're going to look forward to getting him uh, on the line here in just a minute. So uh, while we're well, uh, before we connect with, with Ted, just tell you a little bit about us. So uh, my name is Murph. This is Murph's Fan Cave, and we have a, a host of shows here on the network. Mainly the flagship show is called Raiders Fan Radio, and we broadcast that now here on Twitch and also YouTube and Facebook and all over the place. Every Wednesday night, that's Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern and 4 p.m. Pacific, uh, that is it, and and we're here on the Twitch at the uh, the encouragement of my two teenage kids, my two boys. They're like, uh, we started, we've been doing this podcast a long time. Then I started doing a video version of the podcast, and then like a few weeks ago, they're like, Dad, why aren't you on Twitch? And I'm like, Well, isn't that like a gaming thing? Isn't that where like that's like a young person thing? And they're like, Dad, everyone's on Twitch. You need to go be on Twitch. So. Here I am, this 47 year old man talking about the Raiders here on the Twitch. And so, for the one of you, <laughs> for the one, the one of you, whoever you are, man, I love you. For the one of you that's watching, and uh, for maybe the tens and tens of you that will watch this in the future, thank you so very much for supporting what we do at Murph's Fan Cave. You can find us all over the place, uh, mainly the Raiders at Raiders Fan Radio. We're on Twitter, we're on the Facebooks. We're all uh, or on the YouTube. YouTube is Murph's Fan Cave, youtube.com slash Murph's Fan Cave. But thank you for those of you that are here on the Twitch. And um, and uh, yeah, man, hit the, hit the bell. Is that what the kids say? Hit the bell, hit the button, like subscribe, get the notifications, like whatever you got to do, man, to, 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 to do that, then like do that. And thank you for those of you that have done that. And especially that one, that one lone warrior we got out there, that one viewer, man, thank you for that. All right. So uh, let's see if we can get Ted win. Uh, here and on the phone. So let me let me hit him up on the old Skype machine here. Uh, let's see. All right, here we go, Ted. Oop, here we go. Okay, let's see if we can get him. All right, we're waiting on Ted. Oh, ringing, ringing, ringing. Oh, said Ted isn't online. Okay, let me send Ted a text. Ready when you are, brother. All right, let's see if we can get get ted on here let me try that again let me hit the let me hit the phone button this time waiting on ted win nfl staff writer for the athletic loves to uh he does some great stuff best film out oh says ted still isn't online all right 
while we're waiting for Ted, let's talk a little bit about uh, what we're going to talk about to Ted ab- about, and that is the Raiders hiring defensive coordinator Gus Bradley. I thought that uh, Ted would be an excellent guest for us to have uh, here on the show because he is such a big film guy, and he's all about like the breakdowns, and he's all about the analysis, and I think he's going to give us a really unique insight into what the Raiders' uh, intentions are by bringing on someone like uh, Gus Bradley. And really, um, a handful of things I'm going to ask him about are, like, what are the Raiders, what can they look forward to? What is, Ra- what is Gus Bradley going to bring to what is already existing with the Raiders? And then also, like, what is he going to attract in terms of, like, free agency? Like, what kind of players? And, like, what... All right, there he goes. He says he's logged on. So, like, what are we going to have to look forward to with the hiring of Gus Bradley? And I think Ted would be an excellent voice uh, for that. So let's try this one more time. Let's go back to Ted here. All right, let's try one again. Ring, ring. Oh, says Ted's still not online. <laughs> For the one of you that's watching this, sorry, he says he was online, but uh, it's he says he's logged on, but it's 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 not he's not picking up there. So this is riveting ass radio. Can I say ass on the Twitch? It's riveting uh, radio here, live radio, a face made for radio, and a freaking and in a, a, a conversation that's only one of us. It's me, and then it, it's you, the one viewer. It's certainly not Ted Wynn. So let's see. Uh, how about we try him again? All right. Sending the Skype call now. All right. Nope. He's not picking up there. All right. Let's make sure I got the correct Ted. All right. Maybe that's what's going on. Maybe I got the wrong Ted win. How about that? I had, I had this all set up there before we started, and then maybe I got the wrong Ted. So let's go Ted win. Oh, I just saw him. I saw his picture come up there. Nope, that's not him. N G U Y E N. Yep. And he's in Hayward, California. We know that. All right, let's try it. Gosh, this is terrible. Um, let's see. Looking. Oh man, I don't see him on here. Ted Wynn. Let's try Hayward. Nope. Nothing. There. Let's see. Milpitas, Fremont. Uh, dang. Hey, Ted, what's your Skype name? I can't find you now. <laughs> this is terrible. Oh, my gosh. You know, this is the danger of doing things live, man. This is a good thing we're not, well, I mean, that's a bad thing for the one viewer here. I promise we're going to talk a lot about some cool Raider stuff here in a second. I promise this will be good. Okay, let me see if I can dig through here. I, we've talked to Ted numerous times here. Why can't I find him on the, on the Twitter? Maybe he's under my contacts. Uh, let's see. I scroll down here. I should have waited to get him on the phone, but I wanted to play our cool intro. Okay, wait. There he is. Ted. Nope, that's not the t- right Ted Win. Oh, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Ted. N G U Y E N. Ah. Yeah, he's not coming up there. Hey, Ted. I'm having trouble finding you on Skype. Oh my gosh, that one listener. How about if I just play some music while I'm waiting to get get Ted on here? Let's play some beats from Cousin Sonny. That's cool stuff, right? I'm going to go to the fan cave cam. We're waiting to get Ted in here.
Ted. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on, brother? There you are. How are you? Not much, not much. Good, how are you? Good, good, good. I was afraid I had the wrong Skype name there. I appreciate you jumping in here, joining us for uh, Raiders Fan Radio Conversation. No problem. My bad. Yeah, I had to. I haven't logged on to my Skype in a while. I forgot my password. So I'm gonna log on. <laughs> That's all good, man. That's all good. So, man, I appreciate you joining. So, last I was looking at the date. Last time you were on was almost right out a year ago. It was like uh, the 30th of January uh, last year. So, we must have talked to you uh, heading into the Super Bowl uh, last year. So, thank you again for joining us tonight. Uh, appreciate you. And, um, uh, man, so before we get into the interview, man, how are things going for you? What have you been up to? We know that you know you, you got this great career now going with the Athletic. You're a staff writer over there. You got this great podcast going on, the State of the Nation podcast. What else can you tell the Raiders fan radio listeners about what you got got going on? That's pretty much it. I'm just working hard and um, been getting really in, into pizza making during this pandemic. Um, but uh, other than that, I've just been focused on football and uh, focused on uh, just trying to do the best work I can. And, uh, you know, football season is not that long. So uh, during the season, I'm just working nonstop. And that's pretty much all I think about. Right on. I dig. The, listen, you're a man after my heart. I'm a big pizza guy, too. I make my own dough. Do you go like the Tipo double zero flour and go the whole nine yards? Or are you like you got like a pizza oven at the house or what are you what are you doing there? What are you working with? Yeah, my uh, my friends got me a, um, a uni pizza oven for uh, for my birthday in April. And ever since then, I just been make my own pizza. And yeah, I. I go double zero, um, but I, you know, I've been, I've been, I like New York pizza better than uh, Neapolitan style. So I, I've been experimenting with uh, regular flour and kind of mixing regular flour and double O too. Uh, so I, you oh. know, I, I've tried a, diff- a bunch of different doughs, and um, it, it, it's been fun. Like you, you know, it's like you get addicted to it. You know, after a yes. while, just trying to perfect you know your own sauce, perfect your your dough and all that stuff. Uh, the bad part is, you, you know, you eat pizza every other other, other day. You got to work it off. But, uh, <laughs> but it's, been, it's, been, it's been fun. And uh, my, my brother definitely enjoys it because he, he gets half the pizza every time I make one, too. Oh, there you go. Right on, man. Yeah. So my uh, my grandma used to make, it's focaccia bread, but we call it fugach. And so my grandma used to make this fugach. And so when I started getting into making pizza, I started making it kind of like a hybrid of like, I do like a fugach, kind of like a pizza crust kind of thing. And then, so like it's it's real light and fluffy, but I'm with you. I don't like the Neapolitan. I, I do like. I mean, pizza's pizza. I like pizza, but I I prefer something more that's a little more the New York style, um, more so than like a Neapolitan style. And so like I like, uh, you know what I mean? That so you are you talking like the big flat pizzas that you fold in half, like fold the slice, that kind of thing? Yeah, I, I don't I don't make it huge, but I, it's definitely like a, a thinner crust, um, a lot crispier. You know, like you know when you make a New York pizza, you're focused on a crisp. You're not really focused on the softness of a Neapolitan pizza. So uh, just try to get as crispy as possible without burning. You have a little more time, you know, to cook the ingredients. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like New York pizza, uh, pizza a little a little bit more than Neapolitan. But like you said, all pizza is good. Pizza is pizza. The pizza is pizza. That's the fun thing about doing this stuff, man, is that you, you get into it and it's like, well, even if you mess it up, even if it wasn't you were trying to do, it's still good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah the, so. the worst part is if it gets stuck to the pan. That's, that's, that's oh, the only yeah. uh, <laughs> the negative part of it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Good stuff, man. That's fun, man. Well, good deal. Well, um, well hey, well, so, uh, of course, the Raiders fan radio listeners, you, you, of course, course they've tuned in because they want to hear us talk about pizza but uh aside from the pizza uh let's let's talk a little bit about what the raiders did uh just recently here in the off season as soon as i saw that they hired defensive coordinator gus bradley immediately i thought of you um i talk about you all the time on our show i always you know because i'm i'm a dopey talk show host like you know what i mean like i don't analyze film like i love to get as nerdy as i possibly can about it but i have all the knowledge of a youth football coach and a guy that played high school and community college football. So like I know enough to be dangerous, but like I watch your videos and I hear your breakdowns and back when, when you did, you know, when you were doing just full on like blog posts about, you know, the Raiders and like breaking down like very specific things about formations and, so I, I wanted to have you on to kind of talk about Gus Bradley. So from as before we get into the weeds on it, give us like a high level. Like what what can we expect? Like what's the low hanging fruit? The early changes, let's say, for a guy like Gus Bradley, and what can, what will we see as Raider fans? Well, I think with Gus Bradley, you can see a, even less blitzing than you saw with uh, with Paul Gunther. 
Uh, it's just not one of his calling cards. He's um, he's routinely been in the 30s to 32 uh, last in the league in, in blitzing. Uh, so he's from that Seattle system where they play a lot of cover three. They're going to disguise a little of their cover three with putting their corners up and then bailing them out in the last second. Uh, they they play a little, you know. He plays some hybrid fronts, so it's not all all just four three. They'll play a little three four here and there too, um, you know. And, and he's evolved his defenses a little bit as um, you know as he, he as he's gone along a, as a coordinator. But it's just not that much different. There's always those Seattle cover three roots, and it's just very important to have a four man rush. I mean, the, the defense is based on being simple, but having your players totally understand what you're doing. And having them execute at a high level because they don't have to think too hard. Uh, but you know the the flip side of that is you know the offense doesn't have to think as hard too because you're they know what you're going to be in. But you know you have to be able to execute and you have to have a strong four man pass rush. And um, you know I, I kind of did a study on all these guys that stemmed from that Seattle Legion of Boom um, coaching tree, Pete Carroll coaching tree, and everywhere they've been, you know they. they haven't had that much success outside of Seattle, uh, but when they did have success, they had like an embarrassment of riches. I mean, you, they had to, ha- you know, like one of, one of the teams that had success was um, when Todd Wash with the Jaguars, when they had you know Jalen Ramsey and uh, AJ Bouye and all, all those guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it seems like a simple thing, like you need talent to win, but you need a lot of talent in this this system to be particularly good, but I I think Bradley is probably the best assistant to come out of that tree. Um, So, but one thing he, that his defenses have routinely been good at, and even when they're, you know, they've been decimated by injuries with the Chargers, is is they've been good at at limiting explosive plays. So, I think um, you don't, you know, whoever the Raiders defensive coordinator is doesn't have to be amazing. I mean, the, the Raiders just need a kind of average to two below average defense to legitimately be a, a playoff contender. So I, I think with Bradley, you, the ceiling isn't super high unless they have an influx of talent. But I think that at the very least, he could get things in order and hopefully get the Raiders to around you know 20th in the league rather than around the, um, the bottom of the league. Well, considering who our opponents are twice a year in mean, the Chiefs, like they're the kings of the explosive plays, right? And we know that mm-hmm. that Bradley's had a little bit of success when he was with the Chargers in a recent stint, and and kind of you know you know slowing that. Uh, and and the Raiders themselves have had you know you know measured success at least this last year um, against that 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 Chiefs offense. So that sounds like early on that's a good fit. So getting into the weeds a little bit more on it, um, you mentioned cover three. So anyone who plays Madden kind of understands that like it splits the field into thirds you got you know what i mean you got you got your your three deep players that cover over the top and then you got your your players underneath that are going to cover low now but can that defense that he was so famous for you know uh, you know being an architect behind along with pete carroll that legion of boom offense or offense that legion of boom defense can that be replicated can that are we in a different version of the nfl do the things that were going on in 2011 and 2012 when they were you know top 10 defenses in points and yards can those things translate to a 2021 defense how does that how does that look how does it how does it work now well, you definitely have to be more varied. Um, I mean, you know, Mc, Sean McVay when he hired Brandon Staley, he he had a quote. He you know, he said, I, "I knew that that style of Seattle three you couldn't last forever, uh, just because you know teams. You, when you start seeing a system kind of uh, permeate throughout the league, um, teams just know how to beat it because they see it more often. They see what works against it, and then they just become accustomed to to playing against it. So it becomes a little more predictable." Uh, people are comfortable playing against it, uh, so you have to adjust. And Seattle has even moved away from that that cover three. Um, and, and Bradley has adjusted. There's been some differences, but I think that you have to continue to tweak it even more. Um, I, I think um, you know Brandon Staley, who is the hottest you know defensive coordinator, who just actually got hired as a Chargers head coach while we're speaking. Oh, um, really? He yeah, he just got hired as the Chargers head coach. Um, so, you know, he's seen as the most forward-thinking defensive coordinator uh, running the most modern defense, and they actually run a lot of cover three. 
too. But the, the, the big difference is he disguises a lot of, you know, his, his coverages are almost always disguised before the snap. They, they'll always come out of a four man, a four high shell uh, with four players deep, and then they'll shift into their coverages and it just makes it hard to read. So cover three can work, but, you know, there, there needs to be some variation. There needs to be more disguising. Um, and, and Bradley actually mixed in a little more quarters last season, so that's encouraging. It's also encouraging that in his press conference, he said that they're going to add some, you know, he's going to add some more coverages too. Uh, but he, he said that in the past before, and he kind of just reverted back into doing what he does with cover three. Uh, but, you know, hopefully for, for, for the Raiders that he, he's serious about adding some, just, just a little more variations, making um, his defense a little less predictable. Um, and he, it, what was also encouraging is he, he recognized that, you know, having a front, f- a strong front four is essential for making this defense work. He, uh, he said, they're going to address the front four first, and then they're going to fill in the rest of the gaps from there. Um, uh, so, you know, there's some fans that might be like clamoring over free safeties or, or cornerbacks or whatever, but the Raiders have to focus. I think they kind of locked themselves into having to pay a, a big free agent pass rusher some money uh, because they, can't, they they need two. I think they need two um, upgrades on the defensive line, not just one. So I think you have to get one through free agency because you can't rely on a rookie to come in here and just, you know, tear things up. Um, so you could either get two through free agency or you get one through free agency or one through the draft, but there, there definitely has to be some upgrades. So with okay, so with with Gus Bradley coming over and, and and bringing this, I would not necessarily a new system, but this new version, right? This new this new style of defense. And you mentioned the the pass rushers that the Raiders are going to need. There's a lot of excellent free agents on the market, uh, we, we, and not just you know edge pass rushers, but interior guys. We got Von Miller's out there, Leonard Williams, Melvin Ingram, Matthew Judon, Bud Dupree, Shaq Barrett uh, at safety, Justin Simmons. We got Justin Houston, Yannick Ngakwe. Uh, there's there's i mean a lot and then i mean secondary guys like pat peterson like there's a lot of big names out there on defense what give me a couple guys that you think are realistic for us as raider fans you know us as raider fans i don't know if you've noticed but we'll work ourselves up into a tizzy about who who, who we want them to sign um but who do you think is realistic like is there anybody on that list of names i've read or is there anybody else you can think of that is a, a compliment to the gus bradley defense somebody that they could bring in that's plug and play uh you know day one uh you know Obviously, Melvin Ingram is, is a perfect fit. He's played with Brad uh, Bradley um, with the, with Chargers. He's a proven pass rusher. He he plays that Sam position in that defense where you know he could rush the passer or he could play off ball linebacker sometimes if you want him to. Uh, too, he, he you know he but he's a little older. But I you know if you get a if you get a guy like Ingram, he, he's an instant impact playmaker that fits perfectly into the system. So you know what you're getting. Um, and the second guy is, is Bud Dupree. I really, really like Bud Dupree. He's younger, uh, but the problem is, you know, he just is coming off a, a major injury. So um, you're going to have to be comfortable with with the medical and see how he's doing. Um, and he's going to cost a lot of money. He might be the top pass rusher on the market, uh, yeah. but with good reason. I mean, he he looked like a guy that really developed his game this season and looks like a number one pass rusher. So th- those would be my two. Uh, big ticket free agents. Um, you know, obviously, I like Leonard Williams inside too, but his, you know, his value is going to be super inflated because he had double digit sacks last season. Um, and Shelby, Har- Shelby Harris is a you know oh. former Raider that yeah. played with the Broncos, but I really like Shelby Harris. I mean, his, his ability to knock down passes at the line of scrimmage. Right. Is yeah, down. yeah, absolutely. So, okay, so those are some guys that maybe we can look to. Who who's already there that you think will thrive under Bradley? Do we see a, a resurgence of Littleton? You know, we had uh, Compton on the show, Will Compton, former Raider linebacker, and he kind of told us about how confusing at times that Gunther's defense would be, that there would be things that they would install over the week, and then they would get into game situations, and he'd be calling things that were completely off the, you know, you, you know, in still in the playbook, but not anything that they had worked on during the previous week, and so there was a lot of confusion, and I think we heard a similar tail from a guy like Corey Littleton so he's just one example but who's there now that will fit in and you feel will thrive under Gus Bradley yeah I I think Littleton's gonna uh, you know 
uh, I've maintained throughout the season that I think Littleton is going to be good. I just think that he's, he just looks like he's really confused right now. He doesn't know uh, what he's doing. And, and I, I went back and watched the tape in the last two games against Miami and against Denver, and he looked like a totally different player. And, you know, he flashed a lot of that ability that they were hoping to get when they signed him. So I think Littleton will be really good in this uh, defense. Um, you know, I, I think we don't know who was really just playing so confused. And I, I felt like Trayvon Mullen um, was one of those players that, you know, looked like he, you know, he handled it well. I think he had one bad game against the Chargers. And I think everybody kind of just remembers that Chargers game. But he had a pretty, pretty good season overall. Uh, but I think he could be, be even better in the scheme. I think he fits really well in the scheme. Uh, I think Damon Arnett doesn't look like a natural fit because he's such, you know, all his skills are kind of um, man coverage skills, uh, skill type of uh, player. But I think, um, yeah, I think it'll be a little tougher transition for him, but we'll see how he, he comes to this defense. And, um, and, and you know, obviously, uh, I can't remember. Why I can't believe I'm blanking on it. Hopefully, you guys can edit this edit this part out. Um, <laughs> what's the strong safety name? Uh, Who Abram? Abram. Yeah, I don't know why I'm blanking on his name. Uh, yeah, I think Jonathan Abram. You know, obviously he's a natural fit uh, as a strong safety in this defense, and you know, just trying to simplify things for him and allowing his, his instincts to take over uh, will be better for him, and letting him play in a box a little bit more where. He doesn't have deep responsibilities, and he, you know, he naturally wants to come up anyways into into the box. Um, so j- just hopefully a little more experience and uh, simplifying things for Abram and put him closer to line of scrimmage could uh, benefit him. That's awesome, man. Yeah, we look look forward to where. I mean, they've got so many good young players on defense. I feel, and it would be nice to see them uh, really kind of, you know. Uh, being put in position and Bradley said this in his press conference initially put players in position to be successful like uh, that whole notion and 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 kind of let these guys you know play fast you hear that term get thrown around a lot but when you know where you're supposed to be and you know what you're supposed to do it, it, it allows you to play fast and um and Ted look at if 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 we start editing out every time there's a brain fart on this show we would never have a show <laughs> because between me and Uncle Mosh that's all we do is brain fart for like an hour and a half every week so <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just I was sitting on the couch watching like eight straight hours of football, so my brain is like mush right now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, I got a couple more for you, then we'll let you get out of here. Appreciate you joining us. Um, so he brought over also, uh, I don't even know these guys' names off the top of my head, and if you don't, that's okay either. But like, who are the two new assistants that he brought over? Because they were like, also when we've talked to former players or even current players, we hear them talk about, you know, a lot that. You know, like the head coach is great and that's your motivator and that's the guy that like shares his vision and all that. But your positional coaches, the assistant guys, those are the guys that are teaching you the technique and the mechanics and like, you know, they're they're having the bigger impact on your career. Like formerly a guy like Brenson Buckner, right? Like that's, you know, jury's out on how big of an impact he had when he was with the Raiders. Apparently it was pretty darn good. But like that whole notion of like that positional player. So these two new guys that came in, is it Milius is one? And I don't even remember the other one, but do you know, are you familiar with these guys and, and how big of an impact do you think they're going to have? Yeah, I, I'm not really familiar with them, but some people that I, um, people that I respect, uh, have high opinions of them. Um, so I, you know, I trust what they think, but I'm not going to go out on a limb and, uh, say, I, I know these guys very well, know the players that they develop and, and, uh, yeah, just, that's off yeah, season homework stuff, well, right? But, yeah. <laughs> Good. Deal. Uh, all right. Well, hey, so one more for you. Um, so speaking of the off season coming up very soon is the senior bowl. Are you, uh, are you going to go this year? Um, I, it's still up in the air actually. So, you know, it, it used to be a lot easier to travel for work and have right. all your uh, work expenses paid. But, um, obviously in a pandemic season, they're a lot more careful with travel and, um, who's traveling and all those things. Uh, so, you know, I put a request in to go and, uh, we'll, we'll see how, okay. uh, we'll see what happens. Anybody, but, anybody uh, you're looking for, anybody you're looking for in particular, like I went two years ago and I remember like, to me, like, 
you know, there was there was a handful of standout players. Uh, Montez Sweat was one of them that was just like, this guy was so dominant, and he was somebody that I was all about the Raiders uh, taking in the draft, of course, and that was the Senior Bowl where the Raiders coaches were down there coaching them and the 49ers staff. Um, but and the, but there was like Andy Isabella was a jump out player. Drew Locke was a jump out player. Like there was a handful. Is there anybody going into this season that you're looking for as a standout down at the Senior Bowl? Um, you know, for me, I, I'm always, I feel like I'm always behind when I go to the senior bowl because I'm so focused on the NFL that I'm not really paying too much. You know, like I'll watch some college games here and there, uh, but I'm not, I'm not very caught up on all my prospects. That, that's what happens after the Super Bowl. I just start cramming on, okay. on these guys. So I, I really rely on, um, you know, my friends at the senior bowl and some coaches or scouts I might talk to, to, to get a better idea of who, who I should be looking at. Um, but yeah, I'm just, uh, right now my, my mind is all, all NFL. So I, I really don't have any great names to throw at you okay. right now. Fair enough. Hey, as long as it's somebody from Clemson or Alabama, we're good, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, Ted Wynn, appreciate your time tonight, man. I appreciate you jumping in after your marathon day of football. And uh, so, but before we let you get out of here, though, tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, anything that you want to promote or share with Raiders, uh, with Raider Nation, man, please have at it. Uh, you can follow me at Twitter at FB underscore film analysis or. Uh, you can check out my work at The Athletic. We also have a podcast, State of the Nation, that's uh, all about the Raiders uh, with Vic Tafer, Jimmy Durkin, and Tayshawn Reed. Uh, so check that out. Awesome, man. Well, good stuff. Well, Ted, you've been a great friend of the show over uh, uh, many years now. I think it's been like three or four years now uh, you've been joining us here on Raiders Fan Radio at least once a year. And so appreciate you always coming back and being being generous with your time and keep up the great work, man. You're, you are one of my favorite follows on Twitter because I love the way that you dig into the weeds on plays and things. And to anybody that's into that, you want to really break down like the science of football. I think you do an amazing job at that. So keep it up, man. Keep doing your, keep doing it uh, doing your thing yeah appreciate the kind words and lo- yeah let me know whenever you want me on all right brother appreciate you ted take care man have a good night have a good night all right bye-bye all right there he is ted win from the athletic so definitely check him out at uh, theathletic.com and uh and, and support him uh, and again on his twitter it's fb film analysis uh, which, of course, that Twitter handle was started long before he was uh, the official writer for The Athletic. So appreciate Ted uh, being a good friend to us here at Raiders Fan Radio and jumping in and joining us on the show. And so, anyways, um, thank you to all of you that are watching tonight, especially that one dude. I see you. I see you, bro. I got you, man. Thank you for watching. And uh, thank you to all the YouTube people. We're going we're gonna to put this up on the YouTube as well. And, of course, the podcast. And so you can find our podcast. Uh, on any podcast service. It's Murph's Fan Cave. It's my name, Murph. It's spelled right here. Where's it right? Right there, Murph. Here, here, I'll spin the camera. It's that right there. Murph's Fan Cave. M-U-R-F-S Fan Cave. Just search that on any podcast feed. Just search for that on your, your Apple, your Google, your Stitcher, your iTunes, your whatever, man. We're uh, Spotify, Pandora, you name it. I'll ask your Alexa about us. Um, Murph's Fan Cave, and uh, we go live on YouTube and here now on Twitch uh, every uh, Wednesday night. That will be at 7 o'clock Eastern and 4 p.m. Pacific. And so uh, we talk nothing but the Raiders. We get a little goofy. We call it a lighter side journey into the dark side. So sometimes we go off the rails, usually about the first 20, 30 minutes of our show. We're not talking a ton about the Raiders. Always indirectly related about the Raiders. But uh, we just like to have a lot of fun around here. Myself and my two co-hosts, uh, the legendary Uncle Mosh and my best friend Swag Jeff. So check us out if you would be so kind. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe. Do what you kids do. We love you. Go Raiders. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace.